Hi, Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Thomas Osang Moyer. Um, he's based in Paris, France, and is a concept visual development artist. He does a lot of environments, um, keyframes, and he does have quite a... Um, sometimes he can go for a graphical kind of style where they're very graphical, <laughs> shape heavy. They're almost like, um, um, like editorial illustrations, right? And sometimes he can go for a more not necessarily kind of like a realistic kind of look where it's more where there's, where there's a bigger value range and where there's obviously way more texture right but most of his work is pretty saturated which i do like it's kind of nice on the eyes or easy on the eyes right and in a way they could also become prints right it's not like super what's the word um detailed but in terms of composition composition it looks pretty good and uh yeah so by the way i will be linking a few of his um links in the description below he, he also does have a gum road so he, i think he does have like two um tutorial packs so yeah again there's not a lot of texture um these feel more like um experiments right um and sometimes he'll post like a batch of these sketches and they actually do feel more like um, abstract art, right? Um, and I'm guessing he does use Photoshop. I'm guessing he... This is more of the color dynamics, maybe? Or maybe he's using the smudge tool, I'm guessing. Um, and they look rather interesting, right? And to me, they personally feel like... You know, they are some kind of editorial um, illustration. Just, just because they're kind of okay to be printed. Or published online or on paper right for some kind of uh, article or book um, and yeah not a lot of texture in his work usually when it comes to this or these or this type of stuff um, but I do like how it's easy on the eyes right it's not super it's saturated definitely saturated but it's not bright necessarily you know what I mean uh, now this one's kind of toned down. It's not necessarily, um, it's still graphical in nature, right? But again, there's a kind of easiness to it. Um, um, it's still kind of shape heavy, very, very, it's a bit stylized, I guess. And again, even this part right here, if you kind of crop this part, it looks like um, it could be some kind of editorial um, art. Maybe spot illustration, or maybe it could be like a, a full page kind of illustration, right? For a magazine um yeah i'm not sure how he does or he picks the colors i'm guessing maybe it's more of an adjustment layers kind of thing like he does it after maybe he focuses on the composition first and then he'll play around with the with the colors with the hues later on i mean look at how interesting this this thing is right it could be like an actual a painting print um he could sell these sorts of things on Society6, Redbubble, right? Just because they look rather interesting. Um, lots of composition play here, right? I love this one. With the birds, with the seagulls, right? Um, reminds me a bit of uh, Shatish, Shatish Kumar. Now, Shatish Kumar is a bit more... He likes to add a bit more texture. Texture? And he's slightly a bit realistic, but the way he handles colors, th both of their works are, or both of their styles, I would say, they're pretty easy on the eyes. It's a bit dark, even if they go for a lighter kind of image, where there's more lighter values than dark values, it's still kind of easy on the eyes. It's not like uh, blinding you, right? Now, this one is super graphical, by the way. Um... And they tend to, they can look rather flat sometimes. Now this one is a bit more of a painting, right? Where it's a bit more 3D, right? This one's a bit flat right here. And this one. And this one is a bit flat still, right? But, you know, thankfully there's a bit of texture. Oh, it also reminds me of Larry Southberg. Um, he also does like a lot of environments and there's way more texture. And it, he also does have an easiness to his work.
like it's when you look at his work it's easy on the eyes right now this one is a bit more realistic in a way like this is typical concept art stuff right a bit more texture i'm guessing some photo bashing was used and he did include some thumbnails here exploring the um the colors the hues that are kind of appropriate i guess for his concept a very very interesting looking thumbnails right and he's more focused on environment art kind of like um i think john park also is pretty environment heavy i mean he does have like a few character designs a few mech designs but he's more of an environment kind of artist right or a scene kind of artist where he puts in a full scene right some traditional drawings of this concept right this kind of valley right he did use a 3D mod uh, modeling program for this 3D sketch. Um, oh, he did use 3D code and Cinema 4D for this one. And Photoshop, obviously, but... Uh, yeah, I'm sure he could have achieved the same thing with Photoshop as well, just because it's not really that, like... Um, it just It's more of a bonus than an actual kind of need for him, I guess. Just because he does have, like, proof of his competency when it comes to 2D painting. I love this one, though, right? Now this one's more of a, again, it does have an editorial illustration kind of look where it's a bit clean, a bit peaceful. Um, these look like quick oil paintings to me. You know how some people can do like uh, quick oil paintings in a very small canvas? You know, just for practice. I've seen a lot of like traditional artists do that. And it kind of has the same vibe. Very, very chill, very, very simple looking. But it's kind of pretty, right? And again, its color choices aren't that boring, right? They're actually pretty interesting. I love this graphic here. Uh, I'm not sure how he did this. Maybe just Photoshop? Oh, Photoshop, I guess. Very, very cool animation here, right? Hmm. Very, very graphical looking artwork here. Again, it reminds me of the work of... I forgot his name. Um, was it... Uh, God... I know his name. His name is Sergei Kolesov, right? He's he does have like a lot of recent work, um, where he focuses more on editorial types of illustrations, where they're a bit flat, a bit graphical, right? Um, so Thomas here is kind of the same thing. I love the shadow here, right? Ooh. These are some studies of his, um, painting studies of environments. They do have a bit of texture, but they're kind of flat and kind of gouache-like in a way, right? If you've seen gouache paintings, they tend to have a kind of, sorry, the kind of direct painting style, right? There's a bit of texture here, but, uh, oh, I can see a smudge tool being used for this part, right? Look at how he did the shadow here. It's, uh, it, it's not super contrasted it's actually the, like the levels of it it's actually pretty bright so it's kind of grayish in nature right but it does have a very interesting style or interesting kind of look to it um very modern looking way or it's a kind of a modern way of painting contemporary way of painting where it's not about the uh, the fullness of the texture it's a bit simplified right it still has a bit of storytelling in it but it's not that like strong ew um so these are more may sketch a day stuff um oh it's may by the way as of this recording it's may because i do these videos kind of i batch these videos so um i'm probably posting this publishing this on a later date just because you know i mean look at it the composition is pretty good. Look at how we separated the sky here, the background, this field, this valley, and then the lines here. Oh. And again, even though it's kind of, it's a strong purple, strong red, but it's easy on the eyes, right? Ooh, sexy, right? It's kind of neon-ish, but it's not, again, it's not super bright. It's saturated, but it's not bright. Now, this one is um, <laughs> my character design for a post-apocalypse man. Mm. Not sure what that was about, but anyway. 
I love this babe. She's kind of hot. Um, cute. Oh, this the perspective of this one is kind of pulled. Very, very exaggerated, but I still like it. Now, I'm not sure if he... This could be done... Could have been done in 3D, right? Mm, some random sketches. Again, very graphical looking. Lots of experimentation going on here, right? He's kind of like, um... Um... I'm not sure if Alexander Mandrajev does the same thing. He's more of a keyframe kind of guy. He's not very graphical. He is a bit, but not really, you know. Like his work tends to look more like paintings and it's, it's definitely way more textured than Thomas Osang Moyer. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. Ugh. Oof. Reminds me, it, it, it has a sparth kind of feel to it just because, I don't know, right? Oh, I love this one. Oh yeah, I think it's because of the, the color, the color use and of course the composition. Composition wise, in terms of like the hues being used, they're a bit saturated. Um, although for Sparth, he goes even brighter for the most part, right? Now here you can see him use the smudge tool, he's just kind of pulling the shapes around or pulling the pixels around and you can actually design a lot of environments or, you know, anything this way. You're making use of Photoshop, some default tools, right? This one reminds me of the work of Victor Staris. Um, he's kind of an up, not upcoming. He's an stop. He, he does work in the industry, but he he does have like a nice tutorial YouTube channel. Whenever he does his castles and environment types of artwork, and it's pretty. It's not. Uh, it's pretty consistent, I guess. Um, and he's very focused on just the tutorial aspect of environment concept art. So that's pretty cool. Um, and very John Park ish, kind of. Ooh, more castles. Oh yeah, Sparth does the same thing. He likes to use this sort of, uh, I'm guessing it's some kind of custom shape or a brush. You know, to save time, right? So in terms of techniques, um, Thomas, Awesome Weir, and Sparth are kind of the same way, where they utilize Photoshop's tool, set, tool sets and yeah. Uh, a bit more rendered, a bit more textured, texture, texture. Um, I think maybe this was done a bit in 3D. Oh yes, 3D code and Cinema 4D for the basic modeling and then he kind of just went in and painted on top of it, I'm guessing. So some color thumbnails and pretty quick. And look at how he was able to establish like the, the colors, the moods, right? The composition with the thumbnails. Um, cause sometimes I have this habit of going like into the painting immediately and I'm kind of avoiding this whole thumbnail phase. I mean, you can save so much time by just working on a couple of thumbnails and choosing one to invest in more or kind of mix and matching, right? So traditional sketches here, I'm guessing done in a sketchbook, right? Um, doing some studies and then I love his thumbnails though, right? The hues, the colors, the composition, amazing, right? Amazing. And look at how the colors aren't necessarily realistic. He likes to play. He loves his uh, hue play here, right? Now this one's a bit, I'm guessing maybe, yep, 3D. He likes 3D coat and Cinema 4D. And then some paint overs perhaps on top. Right? Ooh. Again, you can tell by the colors, it's definitely his work. Very, very easy on the eyes. Oh, he likes to include the traditional stuff or his kind of uh, sketchbook notebook um, sketches. Really helps you to uh, understand his kind of behind the scenes process, you know. <laughs> Ooh, he has like a power snake <laughs> spirit. Again, color is amazing. Easy on the eyes. Right? These are not natural tones, but they, they're still kind of easy on the eyes, right? Ooh. May, more of my sketch a day stuff. This was done with color dynamics turned on for this brush. Now this one has way more texture, 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 texture. Oh, I love the white here being used, right? 
with the reds and with the blacks. Ugh, high contrast. Mmm, sexy. Now, the perspective, is, the perspective is kind of graphical. It's kind of like a flat illustration. It's not like a exaggerated or anything, right? But it still kind of carries like something. Like it's a, it's a weighted frame. Like it's not out of place. This one's pretty scary. Reminds me of the zombie. I, sh I, I remember playing this game. I was kind of addicted to this game on iOS. It's kind of a, it's a very popular zombie game. I used to play it a lot in college. <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 it was just so ad addicting, you know? Um. Anyway. <laughs> and I also like the game Two Cars. Um. Just a personal thing there, personal note. Oh, he did like a rough sketch. First sketch, right? Um. Uh, just checking out the composition, I guess, and then he invested in it. He liked the, the way it looked, and then boom. Painted over it. Like a boss. Right. Right. Oh, it reminds me of one of John Park's pieces here. Because John Park has a piece where he does like a, a big, uh, a, a long frame, or it's actually a square image, one day one image, and then there's kind of a mountain, and then there's kind of a valley here. It has a very kind of cowboy, western kind of look. Or Native American, I guess, just because it's so western, right? Like desert E. Ooh. I'm guessing he did use the smudge tool here or some kind of mixer brush to kind of soften some of these edges here, right? I love the way the trees were done. This one is very John Park-ish, right? Like, the, the efficiency of it is very John Park-ish. Because if you see the way, or if you check out the work of John Park, it's not like he doesn't spend, he doesn't waste time, I guess, like me. <laughs> uh, anyway. Bad joke. Uh, more experimental stuff, I would say. Right. Oh, fuck. Now, this one reminds me of Alexander Mandrajev. Just because he does have like a Marvel piece. Uh, he worked on Doctor Strange. And I think the reds are kind of making me feel his work or that. Or I'm, I'm kind of reminded of that piece of his, of Mandrajev's Doctor Strange kind of concept art. Right. Very, very graphical, very, very compositionally strong. Um, although, I would say Thomas Aosang Muir is more playful with the compositions compared to Sparth. Because Sparth likes to go for like a standard shot. Like it only goes like up and down, generally speaking. But it's kind of like a direct kind of um, shot. But Thomas Aosang Muir, oh fuck. He likes to play around with the shots. So they're going to be a bit more dynamic and more experimental. Like Sparth has like a set process set kind of shot you know so and it's pretty efficient at it so yeah thomas here likes to experiment a bit this one's more of a keyframe right uh I, I believe these are inspired by his berlin shots um he's trying to learn photography on the side so he has his i think he's playing around with his own personal like reference photos I love the way he was able to bring these two shots and kind of apply them in this shot of his. Wow. Look at the hues. A bit of, uh, it's a bit cooler on this side and it kind of gets warmer here, right? Very, very strong story t uh, storytelling skills here, right? Reminds me of, a bit of the work of Dom Lay. Um, he likes to play a lot around with the, uh, the lighting of his pieces to kind of generate some kind of story. Right? To kind of lead the eye. Um, so yeah. Oh, process shot, GIF. Let's see, oh, very rough. Some definition, definition, filled in the rest of the frame. Right? So it's kind of chaotic in a way. I, I think he, he doesn't have like a strong set uh, layering process for, 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 for Photoshop. Like he just kind of builds it up as he goes. Kind of like a, um, John Wallen Liberto. Um, where they're not, they're a bit chaotic, I guess. Although, if you buy any of his, of any of John Liberto's, like, Gumroad stuff, and you check out his PSDs, Jesus Christ, there's like uh, 200 fucking layers, you know? <laughs> um, but, it, you know, it works, you know? I'm kind of the same way, although that's a bit too much for me, you know? Like, my, my Photoshop uh, program just kind of stops, or it starts to lag. Um... Maybe one day I can invest or fix up my PC here. 
But, uh, oh, these are traditional gouache paintings, sketches, right? Plain air gouache, right? Sometimes I want to be able to do this one day. You know, once, I've, once I'm kind of established and everything's kind of good, I want to be able to do more watercolor paintings, kind of like Alvaro Castagnet, Castagne, right? He's one of my favorite um, watercolor artists. Um, I want to just go out there and be like, um, just, you know, just paint stuff with my rock hard abs, you know, just getting babes left and right, you know? Anyway, <laughs> we can all dream, folks. Um, oh, more composition shots. Um, right? Again, look at how easy it is on the eyes, right? This one has a bit more texture. Texture. Um, oh, he's focusing more on sunsets. Wow, look at how easy these are. Now, this one is doing it in, in reverse, like the sunset is kind of behind you, right? Oof, fuck me. Wow. Wow, it, it, it looks kind of magical. Lots of storytelling going on here, right? Like, you, you can kind of... It feels good. Like, you want to be there and just explore shit, right? You can do so much with composition and, and lighting. And even if your, like, figures, your characters, your, even if your environment is not that fully designed, right? Where it's just graphical, but if the composition, the shot, the lighting, the values are kind of right, oh, fuck me. You're going to attract so many eyes, right? You're going to just visually arouse your audience. Now, these ones are way more uh, graphical, right? Not really painted. Well, kind of painted, but it's 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 a bit sharp, I would say, right? You can tell. Um. So just another compilation of sketches. He does like a lot of these sketches, you know. Oof! Reminds me a bit of Jun An here. This one, this piece, Jun An. Um. Ah, look at the screaming. Ah. Um, oh, uh, he likes to experiment a lot, doesn't he, right? What's, con what's consistent about his work is his color use. His hues are very kind of playful and but easy on the eyes, right? Um, Marta Nael is kind of different. She's a Spanish kind of illustrator artist. She loves it. She loves her hues, but she kind of goes like, boom, like just blinding it it looks good though but yeah it's kind of strong um pretty intense but yeah she breaks it down via her impressionistic strokes so it's kind of like a like it, it, it like the saturation ends up like splattering all over the place so it's not like super sharp right um anyway well there's another chick um i eventually i'll be doing an art review over work as well she posts consistently on Instagram, like, I think she posts daily, like, fucking consistent, right? Um, very, very scary in that sense. She likes to focus on, like, uh, human figures, usually babes, which I do like. I love babes as well. Um, but she does have a very graphical, impressionistic kind of style. Like, she just likes to refine the face, and then everything else kind of just um, flows, right? And she doesn't have a lot of texture like um, Thomas Osang Muir sometimes, you know? Uh, for these batch, for these sketches here, um, they're very exper experimental and graphic at the same time. Lots of photo textures, I'm assuming. Um, right. Great way to, um, very, very interesting shots here, right? I recommend the work of Shatish Kumar. Both of them have, like, the same compositional kind of, um, vibes. Or these are more gouache, plainer paintings, right? I want to do gouache as well. <laughs> it's like more, it's more of an opaque watercolor. Gouache is. <laughs> oh, look at those clouds. So epic. Am I right? Am I right? Very, very experimental again. Um, but again, the hues are still there. Beautiful. This one's pretty natural. Right, pretty realistic, kind of like a classical painting, right? These are more me uh, sketch a day stuff. I actually don't join a lot of these, like, uh, you know, like, uh, um, they're not competitions, they're kind of like a, you know, like Inktober. I don't do those kinds of things just because I'm, I'm kind of like a rebel, you know. <laughs> 
I don't know. That's, that, that's just me. Maybe I'm just being like a contrarian, you know, just for the sake of it. Yeah. You know? I just want to feel special. Um. Oh, this one definitely reminds me of uh, what's his name? Larry Southberg, right? He loves his environment concept art. Um, but it does have the same. It it it's it's a bit textured sometimes, but it has a very kind of it has this same vibe. Pretty dark, especially like the like these. Very very dark. Usually, but he likes to add in a bit of like light spots, right? Now, obviously, th these ones are a bit more like context appropriate, just because, or they're a bit more, um, because it's a lava scene, it's a volcanic kind of scene. So, very very interesting, right? Look at how many thumbnails you can do, right? And I'm assuming they don't always have like the same process, but because of his um, process and uh, technique and tool knowledge, he kind of knows what to do to kind of generate an appropriate kind of composition. If ever he's stuck on like one thing, he can just change his kind of routine, right? Or his kind of approach. So it helps to be a bit well-rounded. So maybe his experimentation does help. Um, so really shows you how Practicing on the side and doing like experiments really help you. Um, so more composition, more compositional stuff here, right? And I love whenever he does post like his pencil sketches, like his traditional stuff, just because it's um, you know, he's studying, right? He's taking notes, right? And uh, this thing is also very important in, in like concept art stuff, iterating ideas. You don't have to like stick to your first idea, right? So it helps to be fast and it helps to not fully invest in the beginning, right? Once you have something you like, then that's when you actually start painting really heavily, adding a bit more detail, you know? Um, anyway. I love this one. Reminds me of one of the, the pool scenes where it's kind of under this, uh, like uh, one of the pieces of Junan, where there's this babe kind of walking in water. Um, kind of halfway, and she's kind of angelic and just hot and beautiful actually. She's le less hot, but more like beautiful just because the colors were just really good. Um, anyway. Okay, son. These are more like sky experimentations, right? Look at the amount of thumbnails he does. Um, so he's also pretty good at color grading or doing color scripts. I'm not sure what that thing is. It's uh, is it part of like VizDev, visual development? Who knows? Um, uh, oh, a well, color script. I guess it's. Uh, I'm just kind of guessing here, where because you can tell you have to like sequence your shots, right? So for some scenes, for some aspects in the movie, you have to like pick certain colors, and there has to be like this nice transition. It can't just be a bunch of random like um color grades right so there needs to be some kind of color script i guess where you, you can kind of um use certain like color grades to help um certain story uh, story scenes right that just make it so maybe this is more of a storyboarding visual development kind of thing um very very sequential types of uh, artwork here right Ooh, more textured stuff i love it Ooh. Look at the face. Texture, texture, um, very, very experimental. Oh, these are actually 3D experiments. Shit. He's using Cinema 4D along with Photoshop. So he's not just using Photoshop, he can actually use, you know, other programs, giving him more, like, um, ways to generate ideas and save time. So, you know. Fuck. Uh,. He used Modo in this one. Jesus, he has like a lot of like program use. For me, I'm just focusing on Photoshop. A uh, part of it is because I'm not, I want to be an expert in something. I'm not saying he's not an expert, you know, he's like an expert in everything, I guess. But um, I need to start somewhere, right? And I can just add more programs later once I've, I'm a bit more established, I guess, right? Let's work our way up, folks, and not like do everything at once, right? Um, steady, slow and steady wins the race, um, but sometimes with that, you know, 
strong and scary kind of dominates. So you want to balance your consistency. You know, kind of going steady along with a kind of drive, a kind of hunger for glory, right? Glory. Um, this one is done with Photoshop. Right? Awesome compositions here. Right? He's using some kind of gradient brush where it's kind of soft in the edge. Along with some photo textures, right? Very, very interesting concepts. Or shots. Compositions. So I think he invested in one. Or these are like thumbnails, I guess. And then he picked one to kind of develop more and paint more over. And he went for a more greenish kind of um, grade, color grade for this one. So that's it for this art review of Thomas Awesome Muir. If you want some awesome environment art and you want some reference for compositions and some, you know, some interesting takes on hues. And if you want a graphical look as well, because sometimes he'll go for a more flat graphical editorial kind of look. Um, check out Thomas Awesome Muir's Moyers work. Um, follow him on ArtStation. He does have like a bunch of links, but I'll be linking some of them in the description below, including his Gumroad's um, stuff. So maybe if you want to check out his actual process, uh, you can buy his um, products there. So thank you for watching. Keep drawing, keep painting, and stay free.